Da 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 da. Hi, this is Julie Brown, and this is my podcast, Just Say Julie. Eventually, we're going to have the budget for a real theme song, but we don't yet, so you're going to have to live with this. Da da da. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Just Say Julie. Um, the theme song's still coming. We don't quite have the official theme song yet, but we will. I had the craziest freaking week. This is the first week of. Wait, if we hear any yeah. noise. Yeah. Before Julie starts her story. It's his This is Obi. Obi. My new puppy. I swear to God, he was half this size a week ago. Half. I feel like I have a toddler. He shredded every paper in my house. Um, I keep trying to teach him to go, you know, pee or poop outside. Doesn't get the concept. I have taken him on huge, giant walks. I've said everything, I've made up words about it, and then we we come back in the house, and the second we get back in the house, he pees on the, on the floor. So I'm like, I don't know, he doesn't have the concept that go outside, and I don't know how to give him that concept. So I'm just praying that his natural dog skills come out. Then, plus this week, he also got diarrhea all over the house. So I took him to the vet on... Um, Thursday and they make you I, I don't know if any of you been to the vet lately but during COVID everyone in the world got an animal so the the appointments at vets are insane and you have to sit in your car wait for them to come out and they communicate you with you just on your phone and come out and get your animal and then tell you the diagnosis so you waited for like four hours four too. hours four hours but every time I've been to the vet during COVID it's been four hours so finally they take him in and they tell me um yeah, he has diarrhea, <laughs> and they did, um, they, they're going to do some tests, but they gave me medication for him, which helped, um, but on the way home from the vet, he got in the, in the front passenger seat, he got in the, the, uh, air console. Yeah, well, the area in front of the passenger seat and had diarrhea, so I'm like, okay, great, what do I do now? So when I got home, I had this crazy dog with me. And I just closed the car door, and I'm going to clean it tomorrow. <laughs> it's just, it's so exhausting. That's part of it. I passed out on my couch. I passed out so many places. It's exactly like when my son was little, where all your energy is gone. But at the same time, I do love him already. I'm completely in love with him. So this is what it's like to have a puppy. I don't, I didn't, I forgot. So if you're thinking of it, just know that this is what it's like it's adorable <laughs> you just can't wait for them to go to sleep <laughs> um i also said that we're going to talk about couture this week i was talking about it last week so i obviously had no time to shop for couture plus during covid like are you gonna like can you even go in a mall i don't even know so or a store so i was thinking oh wait i have <laughs> Stop it. I, I, I do have an Alexander McQueen scarf. And he was this incredible designer. See the skulls on it? And, um, well, actually, it is a knockoff. It's an Alexander McQueen knockoff that I got on eBay for like $12. But I really like it. No, 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 OB, OB, no. Drop it. What Drop is that? It. He's, it's the computer um, charger thing. <sighs> okay. Um, I was talking about my scarf. Okay, this is a knockoff, and I feel bad about it, but I wanted to at least make a point that um, designing things specifically as clothes is really worth it because it's really unique. And, and look, they even copied the um, label, Alexander McQueen. Unless, could this really be an Alexander McQueen scarf? Maybe I really have one. It's like when people find a Picasso in their attic, Oh my God. Okay, I'm going to take really good care of this from now on until I find out for sure. Because you're right, it could be. I mean, the label looks really real. Oh my God. Okay, so well, eventually when I can shop, I will get some couture clothing to um, showcase that and explain it to everyone. Another thing that happened this week is I my printer wasn't working for some reason. And I had to sign something for my insurance. Oh, OB, no! No, OB! Oh. Oh, 
Yeah, you want to cut? <laughs> um, I moved Ovi up here because he was ripping the room apart and wrapping around the camera, and he was just going to create complete destruction. So let's hope it, he stays here for a minute. Um, I wanted to tell you about this other really weird thing that happened. I, I My printer wasn't working, so I had to make this, I had to fill this form for my insurance. And I'm like, oh God, the printer doesn't work. And why do printers not work? What is that? Like every printer I've ever had just goes, I'm not working right now, forget it, sorry. So I, I went to FedEx Kinko's and I'm getting a copy of this page. And I'm in those cubicles, you know, and I'm like this, and the person's across from me, but there's like a, a board up, there's a cubicle, right? Um, so I can't completely see her, but I'm doing my form, and suddenly I hear, ah, 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 and I go, oh my God, what is happening? And I peek over the top a little bit, and it's this woman with just crazy hair, and, you know, not attractive, but she's like, ah, ah. And I'm finding it very hard to concentrate on my insurance paper. So I thought, I didn't know what to do. I thought, is she looking at porn? Is she masturbating at Kinko's? So I had this moment of like, just, I can't concentrate. I'm going to go have to tell the manager. But then I thought like, am I going to take that away from her? Her like one moment away from her house where she can see some Wi-Fi and see some dick. I don't know. I'm not going to take it away from her. So I, but then I didn't know what to do because there was nobody around. And then I thought, I don't want to get up because what if she's about to come? <laughs> what would I do? So I waited until it sounded like she did. And then I, I quietly got up and did not make eye contact with her. And I realized I just I just like heard, overheard someone masturbating at Kinko's. It was traumatizing and I'm gonna have to talk to my shrink about it. But I gave, I let someone have that kind of pleasure while I was around. Yeah. Oh wait, I need to put my jacket on because otherwise, I guess, because I have stains. I did try and I know. spruce it up. I know. I've been working at the factory <laughs> all day. This is the me and Jessica section. Benny, Benny, uh, sorry. Um, you want to tell them what you've been doing all day? No, it's embarrassing. She works at a mirror factory and, you know, I'm just... Just like it's the Great Depression. Just like it's the Great Depression. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is sort of like the Great Depression as far as, like, my emotional state. Yeah, exactly. And, and the people are... Are they friendly, though? I mean, it's mostly all women, one gay guy... They're all... He would become my best friend. No, mm -hmm. not this one. I imagine that outside of work, he's like a furry or something. Like, I feel like he has like a crazy alter ego. Life. Oh, okay. I, I like, aren't furries just straight? Furries want to have sex with people wearing. Yeah, fur. But I thought those were straight guys who want to have sex with women wearing fur stuff. I don't really know what's the ins and outs of the I know. Community. I don't either other than that. I know that there's, I have fans in this community because I played a character, the voice of Minerva Mink on Animaniacs, and she's really sexy mink. Mm -hmm. So I have guys who write to me as Minerva Mink, and they, they draw pictures. There's this one guy who's drawn over a thousand pictures of Minerva Mink and sent them to me. And then Ooh, I also, I know, I also cool. played Julie Bruin, who is, you know, based on me, who was Animaniacs character, who's I only got one episode because they said it was too sexy, just like Minerva Mink. Because um, they draw these characters really sexy, then they go, these yeah. are supposed to be for kids. So I, there's a whole community of people, though they aren't exactly furries, but they're guys who like sexy cartoons. I, you know, you don't want to rain on anybody's well, sexual parade, Now that right? I think about it, my first crush was young Simba from The Lion King. What did that become sexual? I mean, I had, I had, like, pet feelings for him. You did? Like, sexual feelings for Simba? No, like, emotional. Like, I thought he was really cute. That's really funny. I don't know that I ever fell for a cartoon character. You never, like, had a crush on Aladdin or no. Mowgli? No. Or young no. Simba? Never. Never. <laughs> I think you're the weird one. I think that... Okay. Okay, I want... If you're watching and you have had a crush on an animated character, 
Why don't you let us know? Yeah, no, I know that people do this. Like, um, do you know the comic Kevin Nealon? No. He's a friend of mine, and he once told us that he kind of had a crush on a Penelope Pig, who was Porky Pig's girlfriend, because of the way her shoes fit into her high heels, because she had fat feet that fit into the high heels. I don't know, but I'm like, okay, you know. I've never had a crush on a cartoon character, so... But, you know, I don't want to tell anyone they can't do that. What were we talking about before? Oh, we were talking about weighted blankets. Oh, we were talking about weighted blankets. I really want one. Dude, I'm going to get you one. I think that'd be amazing. I think that would... Or you could get yourself one. (laughs) I could just just use actual money and go buy one. Um, But I think that would help because they... For some reason... um, Having weight or being hugged relax, takes care of your anxiety. It helps yeah. your anxiety. When I was in my parents' house, I was I thought like, yeah, sure, whatever, weighted blankets. It's like, you know, the next thing that relieves your anxiety, whatever. Yeah. But it really was like so calming. I wonder why does it work? I guess your nervous system just likes being constricted. Oh, right? oh you, my theory would be like that humans, you know, when we lived in tribes and in the mm-hmm. nature and whatever... Our blankets would be like animal hides. And yeah, those are yeah. heavy. Oh, so you're saying the weight. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I don't I don't know because like you they have those thunder jackets for dogs, which just, you know, kind of cinch them in and they calm down. I don't know. But I it sounds good to me. I'm willing to try anything. Like I have to wear socks. You do? I have to wear socks. When you're sleeping? No. Just you mean in life? In life. And I think oh, it's wow. a similar thing. Yeah, it's the... Because I like when they're very tight. Yeah. And I like my shoes to be very tight. Really? Wow. I don't like that. Well, I have also, like, my foot problem on my one foot. I had, was it, tarpal, tarpal tunnel syndrome, and I had an operation. And since then, this foot hurts a lot. So if it's constricted, mm-hmm. it hurts. I heard something on AM radio recently that was like, if you have nerve pain, call now. Oh, yeah. And, well, I, was like, and I thought of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you think of me. Nerve pain. Um, <laughs> you know, as you go through life, things hurt, right? Well, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, you know, the alternative is death, right? The exactly. The alternative besides aging and, is you're and not And pain no is more. that you're just dead. I wonder, don't you, don't you wonder what? dying feels like yes i think it i think it feels like an orgasm you do why why do you think that because when i orgasm i have that feeling of like nothing matters Uh uh-huh just being so in the moment right and i think that's what death probably i don't know i just that's my guess what i wondered is when it's happening do you have the thought like Oh, I'm dying. Do you think that? I think that you and I would because we're so not a- afraid of that. And like, yeah. unless there were crazy circumstances or something. Right. I think if we were like 100 years old, we would be like, oh, I'm dying. Yeah, but doesn't that seem scary? I mean, one time when I was getting um, an- anesthetized, like I was getting put under, I had this moment before I went to sleep where I went, Oh, it's happening now. And I kind of think death could be like that. Whoa. And then, you know, I've, I'm sort of obsessed with it. I mean... Yeah, I know. You watch a lot of videos and I you've do. read a lot of books about Yeah, it. about like life after death and what people see and what they think. Because how can you not be fascinated by it? Yeah. It's so interesting and there's different opinions. And yet, like people say there's a consistent narrative of what they see when they're dying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The the Their friends show up. Uh, a lot of people say that their anim, animals show up, your pets show up, which I hope to God that's true. Um, and that, you, the, you know, the tunnel of white light. Some people see their whole life, and then they, they're not worried. So the basic story about death sounds pretty good. Don't a lot of people who have had near-death experiences get like a little bit upset when they have to come back into the uniform. Yes, they get really upset when they're told like a voice will go, it's not your time or something like that. You just have to go back and they get really upset because they've already resigned to, I think it's probably like if you're on a vacation and you're at that place, you're like, you're loving it and there you're, you have to go home. 
Like, it'd be mm-hmm. like that, like, mm, I don't want to go home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me once in the Caribbean. <laughs> But I think it might be like that. I don't know, but I'm fascinated by it. I wish, and like no one can give you the definitive answer. Like no one can tell you. That's frustrating to me too. We're supposed to just go, I guess it'll be okay. I guess it'll, and then the people that always go, there's just nothing. It's just over. Once you're dead, you're dead. I think those people are mean and they like to wreck parties they're they're those kind of people that go there's nothing because most people believe in something and it gives them comfort why would they take that away you know yeah i think they're like no it's not like when i dated pen Gillette, he was super atheist and if you believed in anything beyond just the you're dead you're dead thing he would get really mad at you hmm. so i mean there's militant atheists yeah. out there and i don't get it why, why, not, why not let somebody have their little, whatever they believe, right? What their religion tells them. Why not? Yeah. Right? If it makes you feel happy or comforted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think people who who have no faith in anything at all are just a level of, like, disconnected from what I think you and I sort of constantly practice. Yeah. Being connected to whatever... To spirituality and feeling like there's a presence there and everything's connected, you know? I mean, that means he doesn't feel that. Yeah. And I used to say that to Penn. I go, don't you feel like that? He goes, no. So you're going... So it's really weird that that... He doesn't walk around feeling like everything's connected and everybody has a connection to him. Hmm. So it seems awful. Yeah, to no, me, it seems I awful. I couldn't do it. No, I know. So it... And maybe it's like... I think it's a little bit like musical ability. Some people have musical ability. Yes. Some people don't. So maybe being clued into a spiritual reality is like a sensory thing that some people have. And some people really don't. Hmm. So I didn't give him too much crap about it. But I broke up with him because I went, there's no way this is going to go any further. Hmm. If, if he's going to always be like, if I'd say something like, well, that's because I'm a Virgo. That would set him off. And you go, oh, okay, yeah. That's too much. You know, if I'm just going to say that, right? But I mean, everything you do is because you're a Virgo. You're, <laughs> we should go through your birth chart sometime because okay. I bet you have a lot of Virgo because you're like I do. very Virgo. I do have a lot of Virgo. Hmm. Why can't people believe the things that make them happy? Yeah. You know, as long as they're not going to, you know, stage an insurrection. Um, yes. Right? Yeah. Because then your beliefs, you must be stopped. The open relationship thing. I mean, I really feel like that's from the past, but I guess it's not. What do you mean from the past? Meaning like, okay, when everybody was, you know, free love was a thing. You weren't even born yet. Yeah. But when... Wasn't even a... Wasn't even a, anything. And then people were like, oh yeah, it's okay to have sex with everybody and that's cool. And that was like a way people were. Mm-hmm. And then it never completely went away, but it, it, it kind of did. Because first because of AIDS and because of, mm-hmm. you know, sexual... Uh, you know diseases so people didn't think it was as cool to act like that but it just seems so it just seems so cruel to the other person that's in a relationship with you right to just go I'm gonna go be with this person I don't know I mean I know people that have open relationships and you know if it works for them I guess that's okay too I just don't understand how it could work it would never work for me I don't think because what I get out of a relationship like a boyfriend for me stability yeah and like connection like a deep intimacy right right. and I don't know why sharing that intimacy breaks it like I I really I don't know if I've unpacked why that happens but for me it feels like if Luke had another girlfriend or was like hooking up with other girls I feel like it would affect our yeah. intimacy yeah but the thing is that guys can they can compartmentalize sex yeah you're right that's the difference i don't think women do that as well but men they can just go it's just sex meaning it's just like going out and throwing a football it's yeah. like that so they can do that you know and it does seem like it would wreck something though that you have with that person mm-hmm. so i don't i think even though guys can think like that i don't think it really works like that yeah, I think, you know, I think you're actually probably totally yeah. right. Well, one thing about guys, like my, I have a gay friend 
named Sam and we were at dinner and this really cute guy walked past us and he just like looks at him like whoa and I go would you have sex with him he goes yeah I go like now if you could would you just go have sex with him he goes yeah I go because it's like nothing to you right like it's like I'm gonna salt my burger he goes yeah so I'm, I, I go, okay, this is so different of a concept yeah. than for women. And, and I believe him that it was like that for him. Yeah. And, I, and I don't really judge him for it being no. like that. That's just how he feels. So I think it's just different for men and women. Wow. I know, Interesting. right? Interesting. I know. Weird. Because I wouldn't do that, even though I think I did when I was younger. Hmm. I did. <laughs> You're like, I think I did. I, I did. did. I met the super cute Italian guy in Melrose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what is that? What happened there? Well, I had sex with him. Was like, he like legit from Italy? Yeah, Italian? like for real. Like hardly could speak English, but he was so cute. I don't know. I can't. And explain. what do you even say? You're just like, come on back to my. Place. We just said, oh, let's get together later, and then we did, and then I don't know because I couldn't put that all together now. You know what I mean? Mm. All the steps, I couldn't even begin to do it. I don't know what was happening then. Yeah. But somehow that worked. You talking about your Italian lover <laughs> reminds me of Juan Pablo de Passi. Yeah, you've talked about this guy. Who is this guy? Well, he is a guy who I, like, I can't even say with validity that we ever had a thing because we uh -huh. didn't. But, like, we, this was before Luke, like a few weeks before Luke. And we were in a improv class together, and when I walked through the door and saw him sitting there and we made eye contact, it was, like, agreed upon that we were in love. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. I know. I've had that, too. It's really weird. And I was, like, 18, and... and but you didn't have sex with him? No. No, because... Oh, no, because should've. this... Well, no, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay. I wanted to. And? Well, so what happened is there was, it was weeks and weeks and weeks of like flirting and like oh, sitting next to each okay. other and getting coffee. Yeah. And then at the end of the show, um, or at the end of the, the, the class, right. he was like, I'm taking you out to dinner. And I was like, okay. And he grabs my hand and we run across Melrose and we sit down. Oh, and before, and like as we're crossing the street, he goes, but how old are you? And I was like, guess. And he was like, 28. And I was like, no. And he was like, 24. And I was like, no. And he's like, 22? And I was like, no. He's like, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 18. And he looked at me with like the most seriousness. Uh -huh. Like seriously, just like dead serious. He was like, Nothing is ever going to happen between us. He goes, you're like my little sister. Nothing will ever happen. Wow. Because he was 36. Yeah, but that's still like, it shows a lot of restraint on his part because you were willing. Yeah. Wow. I was like more than willing. We were like very emotionally connected. connected. Yeah. He took me to dinner and he told me about like how he was on... Um, Dancing Queen. Was that movie? ABBA? No, the Meryl Streep's in the movie. Oh, um, what is that called? It's a really bad movie. Why Mary am I blanking Poppins. on it? Not Mary, Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Um, well, it's ABBA. What's the name of it? It's one of the, it's the title of one of their songs. It's only 17. I can't, yeah, that's Dancing Queen. That's the song Dancing Queen, but I don't remember what the movie's called. <laughs> I know. I just can't find it. Okay, now I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. And now it's driving me crazy. You're just singing it like that. Mamma Mia! <laughs> Dude, I was singing it because I knew the name of it was in a song somewhere. I knew it was one of their songs. I was like, which one? Oh, Abba's so good, but this is supposed to be a horrible movie. You've never seen it? No. Everyone right. said when it came out, everyone goes, it's so terrible. If I, just, I have it as a screener. I just haven't gotten around but to it. But it's horrible in like a I know, the good cheesy way. movie way. Yeah. Well, I will watch it. Well, now we have to because want my ex-lover's in there. We have to watch it. Oh. <laughs> I can't say he's my ex-lover. No, you can say he's your ex-crush. My ex-crush, big time. Hot crush. Was he really hot? 
Dude, like six pack abs. I can't believe you didn't do it. Well, like, you were trying. You I were trying. You know? Yeah, you were trying. I and know. I've reached out to him recently. Really? And what do you say? Did well, you say I'm 24 now? <laughs> well, no, because I'm dating Luke. Oh yeah, that's so right. Be that's tough. right. No, that's right. Sorry. Um, okay. no, I, he I had New York Times, mm-hmm. and a, he was in an article, and I was just like, oh my god, like you're on my phone. You know, hope you're well. And he just was like, OMG, hope you're well too. And I was like, aren't you going to like try and like try take and have away sex from with my me? Boyfriend? I know. He just wow. is too, has too many good morals. I don't know if I've ever met someone like that. But wait, let's talk a second about that feeling when like you see someone and you look oh. in their eyes and it's just like, oh, we're in love. That is the greatest feeling in the world. Um, I had that with my past husband with your baby daddy with my baby daddy the minute i saw him i was like i felt like the room was electrified i really do like when i think back on that moment i felt like like sparks were coming out of his head and i i couldn't i don't remember anything else that was going on and i just knew we were we had to be together so that's about the greatest feeling in the world Mm -hmm. the fact that it lasted too it wasn't like something that just was a weekend so that was pretty incredible. I've been trying to find that again. Mm-hmm. It doesn't come around all the time. No, I don't think it does. No. And I'm like, did I get my last falling in love moment? Have I had that for my lifetime? I don't think so. Well, when I look at the dating apps, I say yes. But, um, <laughs> but I keep thinking I shouldn't go on them because they just depress the shit out of me. I, I mean, I, how does anybody find anyone? I don't, I really am very confused by it. The same way that they always have is just like doing things. Yeah, no, I know. But we couldn't do anything for two years. Dude, so, so true. That's been the hard thing. So true. But it like, what's really hard about the dating apps is I look at them and you're looking at this guy and you, you have to mentally go to this place of could, what would being with this guy be like? And he's mm. reading all you're reading the stuff about him, and it's so exhausting to mentally think about barbecuing on the weekend with this guy, you know, and his children. And you're like, it it just wears you the hell out. Yeah. And most people are big flakes on these things anyway. So even if you start to connect with somebody, you know, it just it just falls apart a lot. You know, yeah. way before you even talk to them or anything. So I don't know. I'm I'm hoping that moment happens because the last time that happened to me was before internet dating yeah so i don't know i hope it happens i think it will i really i think it will because i've dreamed about it my guy Mm -hmm. oh that's right you said you had a dream about it yeah was he kind of hot yeah in like a dad hot way that's okay that's okay i can put up with that i don't want him around all day and all night because then but he'll take care of, he'll help you take care of Obi. I know, but I would like it better if he just came home at a certain point so I could be by myself hmm. without the distraction or but interruption. He probably would honestly feel the same way because presumably he hasn't been dating someone. Okay, but can't I just wish for someone with a job? I'll let you wish for I it. want that thing yes. of them coming and going, not just they're there. I guess you can have what you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I've been so tortured by, you know, men or people in my family that just won't leave. Yeah. That I just want someone who will leave at times. Yeah. So I can go, God, they're gone. That's fair. I think that having alone time, especially like in your house. Yes, I love really, it. It's really refreshing. It's really, and it's when I do creative things, when I think of things, and it's like, it's so great. And when you have a guy around, they want attention. That's why. Yeah, you know, like straight guys. Straight guys. When they're in a relationship, require like as much attention as a toddler. Exactly. So that's what I mean. I don't. I don't want that. Someone who just goes to work and you know everyone treats him like, oh, you're the man, you're the boss. So he gets that out of a system, and then he can come home and be normal. <laughs> I hope. So thank you for listening to our third show of Just Say Julie. Um, It's been really fun, especially distracting since I had this week where I just have felt crazy. My dog is calm right now, so I'm going to keep my voice sleeping down there. Isn't he an angel?
when he's sleeping. He's just perfect. I wish he was like this a lot, but he's not. But I'm going to enjoy it right now. Talk to you next week. Da, 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 yeah.